brothers and sisters good evening to all of you today as per our schedule mr prabhan dr pakkem samuel has to deliver a lecture basing acts and romans unfortunately i tried several times he, he i could not get him over phone or through email then i entrusted the topic to dr gnanavaram the former principal of tamil nadu theological seminary and he will be dealing that topic at the last of the last of this course at the last day of this course so i am not a theologian i have no degrees in theological education but uh, as kaushik told i am an environmental scientist i did my i did doctorate in environmental science especially in water pollution and four students took doctorate under my guidance and i am working as a environmentalist so in the meantime i am studying bible and i got some ideas at the theological ideas about the eco theology so i will be sharing that with you so my work and everything is available in the website drmathikoshi.com if you are interested you can go through that the bible or just us go into the into all the world and proclaim good news to the whole creation how will we proclaim good news to the whole creation when there is no water to drink as per scientific predictions by 2070 one human being will have two glasses of water to drink per day by 2035 ganga brahmaputra and indus rivers will disappear yes climate change is going to affect all creations of god a scorching heat wave in india killed more than 1500 people in 2015 as temperatures soared above 47 degrees celsius <coughs> climate change is the foremost among these challenges as global warming is causing ocean level to rise according to international panel of climate change global sea level are rising at an increased rate which is projected to be even greater this century when global temperature warms sea water expands and occupies more space sea level rise when sea levels rise when ice melts as well the coastal communities in every country are then threatened with floods and storm surges to which the small islands are most exposed that means the first country to be affected is bangladesh then the people in that country will come to india as environmental refugees at the same time there are 58 islands in pacific island, pacific ocean which are small islands by the rise of the sea water these islands will submerge in water within next 25 years cyclone india may experience at 4.4 degrees celsius rise by the end of this century india has also suffered two of the 10 expensive climate disasters in the last two years super cyclone that is cyclone amphen that hit india in 2020 cost more than us dollars 13 billion even as the country was recovering from june october monsoon flooding that cost us dollar 10 billion and around 1600 lives india it was india's heaviest monsoon 
reign in the last 25 years and world's seventh costliest. In early 2021, India suffered two more cyclones. Cyclone Takte hitting the west coast and Cyclone Yas from the east. According to the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center, India internally displaced populations are rising due to damaging climate events. Uttarakhand residents began deserting their homes after Kedarnath floods in 2013 due to heavy precipitation that increases every year. By 2050, rainfall is expected to rise by 6% and the temperature by 1.6 degrees Celsius. To make things worse, India lost 235 square kilometers to coastal erosion due to climate change induced sea level rise. Due to climate change induced sea level rise, land erosion, natural disasters such as tropical cyclones between 1990 to 2016. About 3.6 million out of 170 million living in coastal areas were displaced between 2008 and 2018. Recent figures are more alarming with 3.9 million displaced in 2020 alone, primarily due to cyclone Amphar. India's Deccan Plateau has seen eight out of the 17 droughts since 1876 in the, in the 21st century. In Maharashtra and Karnataka, families deserted homes in 2019 due to an acute water crisis. So I am going to explain what is climate justice. The people of India who are vulnerable to the effects of climate change have not done, have done the least to cause it because climate change is a global phenomenon. We are asking developed countries to stop the morally wrong and misguided development paradigm they are following. That means the developed countries burn fossil fuels and they developed and they polluted the atmosphere. 75% of the atmosphere was polluted by the developed countries by burning fossil fuels. So that is why the climate change is happening here. So the people of India are not responsible for that. The second major reason for regarding climate change as a justice issue is that it comes at a time when the, when the world's richest nations have reached a peak of development, while the developing nations are still struggling to get onto the development ladder. While it is well within the means of rich countries to maintain their current level of economic activity while adapting to climate change. The picture is very different from developing countries, especially in India, majority of the rural areas, they are not having electricity. So we are still underdeveloped in comparison to developed countries. Climate change impacts development programs across the board, from disaster risk reduction to food security and health. The injustice that has brought this suggests that a theological approach to climate change must be rooted in a wider theology and ethics of development, rather than treated as an extension of Christian environmentalism. So what CSI is doing, CSI, the ecological concern, so is a part of our faith. By we are not stopping by planting sapling only. We are studying theologically what we can do in this. 
So I am going to the Bible. These portions are already covered by many scholars. We know that the Genesis chapter 1, all the creations, God found it is very good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. The creation is blessed by the God. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 18 to 21, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are, you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to, kept, to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. The question is, why God asked Noah to save all living creatures? Here, all living creatures are entering into the ark. That means the life of all create, create, creations should be protected. In modern science, we are using the word called biodiversity. That means biodiversity should be protected. In all the countries, there is a there is an international law to protect biodiversity. In all the country, there are biodiversity boards. In all the states, there are biodiversity boards. In all the panchayats and what there are biodiversity committees. That means the government wants to protect not only human beings, all types of animals and plants should be protected. So biodiversity board and biodiversity chairman are doing all this work. In biblical terms, I would like to say NOAA is the bio, first biodiversity board chairman. So he's the first environmentalist. At the same time, he's the first biodiversity board chairman. As for Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 10, then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, birds, domestic animals, and every animal of earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. God is establishing a covenant with not only with human beings, with all creations in the, in the earth. Story of Noah has much to say about biodiversity. In Genesis chapter 9, the phrases every animal or every living creature is mentioned six times as well as every bird twice more. This is a biodiverse chapter. But most importantly, God's covenant was not just with Noah and his descendants but with the animals. It is quite obvious that it is not God's will that animals perish or become extinct. Regardless of their value or perceived value, all species were saved in the ark and to be protected through the covenant. Here is the real biblical basis for the preservation of biodiversity. Bible is also saying about trees. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 19, if you besiege a town for a long time, making war against it in order to take it, you must not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them. 
there is a concern for bird souls in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 6 to 7 let the mother go taking away yen for yourself in order that it may go well with you and you may live long there is a concern for aliments in Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 4 there is a concern for the land in Leviticus chapter 25 verse 1 to 5 Lord spoke to Moses in Mount, on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land that I am giving you, the land shall observe Sabbath for the Lord. For the six years you shall sow your field, and for the six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather their yield. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of complete rest for the land, a Sabbath for the Lord, and you shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard. You shall not reap after, after growth of your harvest or gather grapes of your pruned wine. It shall be a year of complete rest for the land. That means uh, two or three years ago when I went to ECC Bangalore, the director told me that they will harvest only half of the mank, the rest they are giving to the creation. Jesus reconciling the creation. Saint Mark chapter 1 verse 13. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with wild beasts, and angels waited on him. <laughs> temptations of Jesus. Jesus could resist the temptations as he was understood the rhythm of nature. God created everything in his own rhythm. He took six days for creation. Seventh day rest. There is a rhythm in creation. Human beings disturb the rhythm of God. Hence, if you want to see the rhythm of God, you have to observe nature closely. In order to understand the rhythm of nature, Jesus spent 40 days in wilderness. Wilderness a wild and uncultivated region as a forest. In some translation, it is shown as desert. It is not a desert. Now we are coming to the temptation. Devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. Jesus knew the rhythm of nature. When the seed finds a fertile land, having water, it sprouts. If there is a good rhythm, after a particular period, it produces grain. Ripe grains, harvested, grinded, and made into a powder to make bread. The journey of the seed to bread is through different process with the rhythm. 40 days stay of Jesus helped him to study the rhythm of nature. Hence, Jesus was not ready to disturb the rhythm of nature which God has given. No. Temptation 2. The devil took him to the holy city and had him to stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands. So that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Answer Jesus can be paraphrased 
in a different way. I made the universe and I know its rhythm. Anything falling from the height make collapse. That is the rhythm of nature. Hence, do not test your goal. Temptation three. Devil led him to up to a high place and showed him in an instant in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, to us all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord, your God, and serve him only. It can be paraphrased like this. I have created each and everything in the universe with an intrinsic value and purpose. You and or you or any corporates of any multinational companies have no right over this nature. Its honor is God. Hence, worship your God. In Psalm 24, verse 1, and Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 50, verse 10 to 11, we, we see that the God is the owner of the creation. Ownership of creation by God is a strong motivation for the Christian to be involved in its protection. Such Psalms, chapter 8, 104, 148 are full of praise for creation and clearly show that God's revelation to us is both through scriptures and through the wonders of his creation. I'm repeating, clearly show that God's revelation to us is both through the scriptures and through the wonders of his creation. The greatest passage on biodiversity in Bible is to be found in the book of Job, chapters 38 to 41. After Job has been allowed to suffer terribly and then received visits from his friends whose words were of little comfort, God finally answered Job out of whirlwind. God does not call on Job to repent but instead gives a wonderful account of many aspects of both physical and biological sides of the creation. There is no shortage of bio biodiversity here. The hawk soaring, <laughs> eagle nesting, feeding her young, the mountain gods, deer calving, lions, ravens, ostrich, and goes on. This is God's view of his creation and its biodiversity is obviously very important. The descriptions of animal behavior and of the wonders of heavens did lead Job to repentance. Learn from nature. From Job chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, ask animals, they will teach you. The birds of the air, they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among these does not know that? The hand of the Lord has done this. In, in his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. Learn from nature. Read Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 to 28. Four things of the earth are small, yet they are exceedingly wise. The hands are people without strength, yet they provide their food in some way. The budgets are a people without power, yet they make their homes in the rocks. Locks are no king, yet all of them march in rank. The lizard can be grasped in the hand, Yet it is found in king's palaces. Read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. That is also from the nature. 
go to the ant you lazy boss conserve its waste and be wise learn from nature new testament saint matthew chapter 6 verse 26 to 30 look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them and why do you worry about your clothing consider the lilies of the field they grow they neither toil nor spin yet i tell you even the solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of this but if god so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today tomorrow is thrown into the in the oven will he not much more clothe you you of little faith bible is biodiverse from genesis to revelation we read about many plants and animals we will also read about god's concern and commands perhaps the most compelling reason is that god so loved the cosmos that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life this is very important god so loved the world this is not written like this god so loved the human being there is another chapter mark saint mark chapter 16 verse 15 and he said to them go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation it is not written like this proclaim the good news to good news to the whole human being to the whole creation without biodiversity health of the planet is at stake higher the number of species that can be supported in an ecosystem higher the rate of survival for every organism inside that ecosystem including human species so meaning that we cannot alone survive in this world we need all the species to be here many species are extinct that is why so many problems are approaching us that especially corona virus so many species already extinct that is why many enemies are attacking us so the sentence is more important a higher the number of species that can be supported in an ecosystem higher the rate of survival for every organism inside that ecosystem biodiversity is not only necessary for survival but it is also extremely beautiful let us dedicate ourselves for protecting the nature and biodiversity this is called climate resilience protect biodiversity if you protect the plants animals in this earth you can challenge climate change you can live in a climate changing world serious attention was not give, was not given to creation theology as the earlier theologians did not face an ecological crisis as we do today christianity does have a theology of creation the presence of god make this earth sacred that is why god entered into a covenant relationship with all creatures god as the creator is present and continues to work with the land river sea to give life and hope creation theology and eco theology we have been taught a theology which is give which is giving important to the life after death my point is to give importance to life before death also the world we live is also important where there is no water there is no good news i am going to another portion that is exodus chapter 3 verse 5 and joshua verse chapter 5 verse 15 jehovah said 
take off your standard sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground this is an interpretation a metal on your feet is a non conductor your chappal your sandal is a non conductor it blocks the ways from the ground only only when we walk barefoot we will realize that we are a part of the story walking on this earth barefoot we will not step over any creature you see we may have trampled an earth worm or any other it is disrespectfully if we see earth worms or any worms while walking with shoes all those who are from the soil and returning to the soil are our brothers and sisters we will only understand it when we walk on this soil barefoot the spirituality of the soil all living things feed on the grains and vegetables produced from this soil and there would be no life on this earth if there is no soil <coughs> the word the word life itself exists because of the soil the soil not for live for soil soil live for all living things in nature this is the spirituality of the soil living for the days is the true spirituality it should be understood that the soil is alive and intelligent there is no meaning in differentiating between living and non living beings any dead material left outside the soil will begin to rot when you bury it in the ground and see how the soil deals with it it will become a part of the soil land no what to do when we put a seed on the ground they will give life it will be supported until it bears fruit the land will treat everything everything that comes from the land properly but the land do not know how to deal with plastic poisons etc which we have created they disrupt the our rhythm earth is negatively charged that is why we earth electrical connections for our buildings the cable running along the top of the electric train contains a positive charge the negative charge is given by the earth there is much treatment in naturopathy the disease will be cured if the whole body is covered with mud for a few hours the principle is that the negative charge of the soil neutralizes the positive charge of the human body do you know that what do you know what treatment naaman received when he went to elisha for healing 2 kings chapter 5 verse 1 to 17 to bath seven times in jordan river when one is completely immersed in the water that comes from the earth the disease will be cured how did, did the lord jesus heal the blind man john chapter 9 verse 6 mud and water can heal disease yes water air soil are the gifts of god in creation they were pure however humans poison them hence they are sick the power to heal has diminished they are looking forward to a day of redemption they hope to be a part of god's saving work of redemption that we read in romans chapter 8 verse 19 to 21 the creation is looking for a redemption new heaven and new earth 
there will be a new heaven and new earth. There will be no waste in our spring of living water. That water will cure all diseases. On both sides of the river are trees of life bearing tall kinds of fruits. As it bears fruit for every month, it will serve as food for all. The leaves of the tree cure all diseases. Revelation chapter 21 to 1 to 4, 22, 1 to 2. We have given new heaven and new earth. Name which is there in the passage. It is an important the and theological and ecological topic. God created water and trees for a purpose. The vision of John, recalling us to know the, what God's purposes in our lives. There is a new beginning for a healthy life, which affirms a shalom for every creation. Living water flows into the city, which affirms guarantee of life. There will be no sorrow, no death, which saying that God will conquer the power of death by his creations. To your clear crystal water, indicate that there will, be, there will be no factory wastage which mixing into the river water and making it new poisons for all living beings. The pure water coursing down the centers of Main Street denoted us that, that there is a city with best water management, planning, and allowing the tree of life in each side of the city. With that pure water, they will get tall crops of fruit, which is organic and no need to put pesticides. Chemical free fruits available for that particular month. Nowadays, we are producing fruits of all years for which we added chemicals to preserve. But in Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, getting the fruits for that particular month. Need-based cultivation, which gives us a healthy life. The nations, inclusive of purpose of creation, will get medicine, not for individuals, but for the whole universe. The water of life produces health and strength wherever it goes. In the well-being of all creation, we'll, he will be the center of life. God will be with us. Then there will be no curse, death, sorrow, cry, or pain. New and heaven and earth will begin. As a church, we should work forward to make this new heaven and new earth prophetical vision into missional vision. For the older world and its evils are gone forever. Now, I am going to give you six eco-justice principles. Chilikri Vasundarao, the principal of United College, already explained about the six eco-justice principles in theological angle. Now, I am going to explain in a scientific way using science. The first principle is principle of intrinsic worth. So, we know that each and everybody, everything in the universe, God created with an intrinsic value. In an economic point of view, value of anything in the universe is determined by the demand of the market. This is against Christian perspective. For not to explain scientifically, I am giving you, I am showing you two plots. The first plot above, there is no plants. So, the land is bare. The second plot, there is full of grass. So, in one of the classes, one boy asked me, Sir, why God created plants, grasses? It is a new essence because we will clear the land. Immediately next week, it will grow. So, it is grass is a new essence. I explained to him. See the first ground, there is no grass. When sunlight 
falls on the first ground the heat will be absorbed by the soil so when heat reaches the ground the water will be evaporate so when there is no water all the microbes on the, in the earth will die so this is known as desertification in in the plot number 1 if there is no grass the plot will be become desert very soon take the case of second plot when the sunrise falls on the second plot the grass will absorb light energy and make into it into a chemical energy and the land the grasses are power to convert the sun energy of the sun into a chemical energy so the grass is not transferring the heat energy to the ground so by chemical energy it will become a carbohydrates that is useful for that is a food for the animals so my point is grass is a wonderful creation of god with an intrinsic value that is why god created grass so the earth should be covered with grass in order to avoid the certification so grass is a wonderful creation of god take another case we sometimes you may think tiger is a nuisance why god created wild animals god has provided an ecosystem suitable for each for poisonous animals and wild animals god allotted shola forest men entered into the ecosystem of poisonous animals hence they are now coming to the plains we fail to understand the intrinsic value of each component and the ecosystem surrounding it this is true here also sometimes people are asking why god created poisonous animals god created poisonous animals and god gave them suitable habitat for them to live as the guard to protect the forest but men being entered into the forest so that is why the the uh, snakes are becoming a threat to human beings the second principle is principle of purpose god created everything in the universe with an intrinsic value and a purpose nothing in the universe is useless normally i explain it through mangroves we can see mangroves on the banks of the um, sea and uh, exteries so the interesting thing is this is a not a attractive plant normally the developers they are thinking this is a waste plant in economic point of view these plants are useless plants so what they did is they kick they cleared all the mangroves on the sea shore and they constructed resorts so economically this is attractive and income coming because tourists from all over the world are coming to stay in resorts near the seashore so um, especially if you go to sri lanka you can see lot of resorts near the sea <coughs> in 2004 there was a big tsunami <coughs> in the indian ocean with its epicenter west of indonesia it killed 2 lakh 30000 people across 14 countries In, interestingly among the 14 countries two places were not affected by the tsunami one place is in tamil nadu it is known as pichavaram immediately scientists from all over the world visited these places and they found that in these two places the plant called mangroves are growing sufficiently then only they understood the role of mangroves mangroves have a role 
in protecting the land from seashores. These plants grow abundantly in coastal areas. Mangroves act as a seawall to protect the land from the attack of sea. <clears throat> from the economic point of view, mangroves are useless plants. But the, from the po ecological point of view, it is a very important plant with many uses. We usually see frogs. Some people are saying frogs are useless animals. Frogs are an important indicator of ecosystems. <coughs> frogs are also friends of the farmers. Frogs feed on many insects and pests that frequently destroy the crops. The, the um, frogs are decreasing. That is why mosquitoes are increasing. The three, third principle is principle of interconnectedness. So I already told you two principles. God created everything in the universe with an intrinsic value. God created everything in the universe with a purpose. And all things God created are interconnected. See, if there are no butterflies, is it possible for us to live? The simple answer is we will live only for one or two years. Because of the butterflies and bees, pollination is taking place. We are getting grains. We are getting rice and everything because of pollination. The pollination is done by these butterflies. If there are no butterflies, life will be miserable in this world. I would like to take another example from Borneo. In 1950s, in order to fight against malaria, the people sprayed DDT in all the houses in Borneo. Not only in Borneo, in all the places in order to fight malaria in the country, the officers sprayed DDT. In malaria, in, in, sorry, in Borneo, they sprayed DDT inside the houses. So what happened? The lizards, they fall into the huh? lizards, they fall onto the ground because they poisoned. The poisons lizard fall onto the floor. So the cats, ate all the poison lizards. So what happened? The, when the poison lizards entered into the body of the cat, all the cat died. So the cat in Borneo died. So there were no cats in Borneo in a time. So when there were no cats, what will happen? The rats will increase. Along with the mosquitoes and cats, the lizards are also destroyed. There was no cats in Borneo. Consequently, rats multiplied and destroyed the foodstuffs. From the ecological point of view, cats and all other animals have an important role in the ecosystem. The extinction of any animal will invariably enhance the abnormal multiplication of another animal. I would like to give another example from China. Chinese used to see large flocks of sparrows visiting the paddy fields frequently. The farmers began to, began to fear that this would affect their harvest. So they killed all the sparrows. Now they felt that paddy production would increase. As expected, it increased next year. But in the third year, they found that the paddy was affected by pests. Like other birds, sparrows are ecologically significant birds. The sparrow used to catch the worms found on these plants. When the plants flower, it was the sparrows who used to protect them from other worms, which would destroy the plants. Another example 
is a plant living in ocean, which got high significance on the background of climate change. Seagrass is the mm. most threatened ecosystem on the earth. Seagrass is a flowering marine plant sheltered along the coastlines. It has a range of benefits. Seagrass acts as a nursery and food source for a wide variety of marine life. It provides a home for many fish and charismatic animals, protects the coastlines by absorbing wave energy, produces oxygen and cleans the ocean by soaking the polluting nutrients produced on the land by humans. Seagrass accounts for 10% of oceans capacity to store carbon. Seagrass can capture carbon from the atmosphere up to 35 times faster than the tropical rainforest. God created everything in the universe with an intrinsic value and with a purpose. Nothing in the universe is neither waste nor useless. Extinction of any species will spoil the harmony of life <laughs> in this universe. The fourth principle is principle of voice. In 2018, we conducted three days of deliberations and meditations for the clergy assembled for a, at Kodekanal. The clergy assembled for a campfire in front of Kenley Bengaluru, Kodekanal. An announcement came from the caretaker. Don't stand in front of the Bengaluru. A group of bisons are on the campus in an angry mood. All the clergy rushed into the Bengaluru, fearing the bison. The group of bisons were standing in front of the bedroom. Everything came to a standstill. The caretaker burst crackers to the center away. Normally, when they burst crackers, it will return to the forest. But this time, they remind them, in spite of noise of crackers, we canceled our campfire and went to bed. The next morning, when we opened the door, they were still standing there to meet us. My son generally attacked human beings if anybody disturbed their movement. The group of bisons looked at the clergy as though trying to communicate something. In three days of meditations on God's creations enabled us to read their mind. This is their mind which we read. You are talking about the, about the groaning creations. You have to understand how justice has been denied to us by you people. Kodaikinal means gift of the forest. It was a thick shola forest till 1845. The American Christian missionaries and British bureaucrats entered this forest in 1845 to escape from the high temperature and tropical diseases of the plains. In 20th century, century, a few allied Indians came to realize the value of this enchanting hill station and started relocating there. They destroyed the indigenous plants and planted exotic plants like eucalyptus and acacia. Now it is a concrete jungle, jungle where our movements and food are restricted. These are the quotation from the base bison, hypothetical. You people have invaded our land, which God has allotted to us. You destroyed our habitat and our climate. So how can you preach eco-justice in my habitat when my species are struggling for existence? Dear clergy, we are an endangered species. We have been listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list 
since 1986, kindly allow us to live in our land. When you occupy our land, deny food, shelter, we may be forced to come to your law living space. Without any compassion, you call us wild animals and kill us. Have mercy on us. Silence regained for a while, reigned for a while. After 12 hours of passive silent satyagraha in front of the Kenley Bangalore, the group of bison left the campus. Then he, we turned to the Bible. After Job has been allowed to suffer terribly and then received visits from his friends whose words were of little comfort, God finally answered Job out of the whirlwind. God does not call on Job to repent, but instead gives a wonderful account of many aspects of both the physical and biological sides of the creation. The descriptions of animal behavior and the wonders of heavens did Job to repentance. Bison opened our eyes of the participants to understand the message of, from God during the equivalent meditation. The next principle is principle of mutual care. We have to care each other, not only human being, all other things. I would like to tell you a story. On March 7, 2012, Lawrence Anthony died. Two days after his passing, the wild elephants showed up at his home, led by two large heads. Separate wild heads arrived in droves to say goodbye to their beloved main friend, Lauren Sinery. A total of 31 elephants had patiently walked over 12 miles to get to his South African house. Witnessing this spectacle, humans are obviously in awe, not only because of the supreme intelligence and precise timing that these elephants sensed about Lauren's passing but also because of profound memory and emotion, the beloved animals evoked in such an organized way, walking slowly for days, making their way in a solemn one-by-one -one queue from their habit to his house. Lauren's wife, Frangois, was especially touched, knowing that the elephants had not been to his house prior to that day, well over three years. But and they knew where they are, they were stay going. Elephants obviously wanted to pay their deep respects, honoring their friend who saved their lives. So much respect that they stayed for two days, two nights without eating anything. For two days, the herds loitered at Anthony's rural compound on the vast Tula Tula game reserve in South Africa to say goodbye to the man they loved. Then one morning they left, making their long journey back to home. We are going to see a video, which is very interesting. <coughs>
This is the story of a man loved elephants. Wild elephants became his friend, and at last, during his death, after his when the when he died, the uh, elephants marched to his house and paid tribute to the Lawrence Anthony. So, the sixth principle is principle of persistence. If we are not following the um, five rules the nature will send us natural calamities these are the nature's resistance water has a right to flow human rights like human rights water has a right to flow so by disturbing the flow of water, the people constructed a road. So the water restored its right to flow by breaking the road. This is also an interesting. This is what I'm trying to do. Even before I finish delivering the water, and the animals are already converging in the water hole. This is a story from All Africa. Animals of animals. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of liberals. We're talking elephants, buffalo, antelope. We are going to see another video that is about carbon neutral panchayat we want to start this carbon neutral panchayat in many places so this is a model which uh, took place in a place called uh, palakkad in meenangadi panchayat and you can see the Sumati's individual tree planting efforts in her 1.5 acre land contributes to a larger objective. The Kuruma tribal woman is a participant in Meenangadi Gram Panchayat's efforts to become the first carbon neutral Gram Panchayat in India. This Gram Panchayat in the hilly district of Wayanad in Kerala aims to achieve net zero carbon emissions, which means balancing the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere by human activity by removing or sequestering the same amount back from the atmosphere. The carbon neutral project in Meenangadi was launched in 2016 by the Kerala government with the support of NGOs and educational institutions. Since then, Meenangadi has undertaken and planned many activities to reduce carbon emissions and increase sequestration. 
Tree planting activities are an integral part of the initiative. Marangal Natu would be Kimna, Kasaka Paul Saharamai. Tree banking and Varayana or Pudia concept of Udi, number Miranadil Totakan Guru. Patu would be governmental in the Lebia Maya, one time funder. Saharan Stavaratil Nixavich, other than the interest to Puga Ubiovich or Nana, Oro Kasakum, Maranatu would be given the Rola, incendio, they'll give it another. Sampatika Pudusan, the Marangal Vetan Kasar and Urban Rakimaka. A Patara Malagal or Sampatika Sahayam and the Rail. The Panchayat has planted 4.5 lakh trees from 2017 to 2021. Of these, 7,500 trees have been geotagged. Tanan and NGO supervises the process. In 2016, before the state government launched the carbon neutral project, Tunnel had assessed the amount of carbon emission in Minangadi. The study took stock of carbon emission from energy, transportation, land use and waste, and sequestration from forest, plantation, homestead trees, and organic carbon in soil. Tunnel is a task by, uh, by the government to look at emissions and sequestration and come up with this subnational assessment for Minangadi. Panjayas had a lot of discussions, and we had uh, even ward level, and there's visioning uh, uh, meetings and interactions in the Panjayat. So common people came and said, what they vision for Minangadi. The whole difference of carbon neutral Minangadi this is any other discussion on subnational carbon neutral work is that it is a, uh, it follows the tradition of Kerala of people people's movement and that is where the Minangadi project is a project which can clearly stand out as a new or innovative project globally. But farmers affected by climate change remain apprehensive about planting more trees as a solution to all issues. <laughs> A section of scientists like Girijan from M. S. Swaminathan Foundation believes that only young or growing trees can contribute significantly towards carbon sequestration. Carbon neutral. Paddi, Vijayagaram, Kanaman, Pentila, agroforestry system, a number of prosati. Idil etum, Pradana Pata Vakuda in the mother, Marangal Vichipitigia. Kudal secret station Nadakanam and the Bengi, our Pradesh, etum Kudal young trees of Kanapa. Krutimaya would age in a station, Mela Marangal Mittamati, Pudi the Vikuda in the mother, Uru carbon secret station perspective will water important. Other than planting trees, the Meenangari project also involves initiatives to reduce emissions in agriculture, energy, waste, water and transport sectors. During the last three years, the project is reported to have attained net zero emission from waste. This is attributed primarily to the contributions of the Gram Panchayat and volunteers of the Harita Karmasena who collect and process plastic garbage from all 8,500 households in the Panchayat. <laughs> I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
എന്റെ പേര് സജിനി ചേച്ചിയുടെ പേര് വൻസ അപ്പൊ ഞങ്ങള് എല്ലാ മാസങ്ങളിലും ആദ്യത്തെ ആഴ്ച ഫീൽഡിൽ ഇറങ്ങുന്നു അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ എല്ലാ വീടുകളിലും കയറി പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ശേഖരിച്ച് നമ്മൾ അത് ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് തന്നെ സോർട്ട് ചെയ്ത് അതിന്റെ യൂസർ ഫീ വാങ്ങി നമ്മള് മീനവാരി പോകുന്നു നമ്മുടെ വീടുകളിൽ നിന്ന് എടുക്കുന്ന പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കുകളും അതുപോലെ കോട്ടില് കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ എത്തിക്കുന്നത് എൻ സി എഫ് ലേക്കാണ് എൻ സി എഫിൽ വെച്ചിട്ട് തരം തിരിക്കുകയും റിജക്ട് ആയിട്ടുള്ള മാലിന്യങ്ങൾ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് മാലിന്യങ്ങൾ സ്പ്രെഡ് ചെയ്യുകയും ബോട്ടിൽസ് പെറ്റ് ബോട്ടില് ഹാർഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കുകളും മറ്റു പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കുകളും ഒക്കെ ഡെയിലി മെഷീൻ വെച്ചിട്ട് പെറ്റ് ബോട്ടിലൊക്കെ ഡെയിൽ ചെയ്ത് പോയത് രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനെട്ട് ഓഗസ്റ്റിലാണ് ഹരിതകർമ്മസേന മിനങ്ങാടി ഗ്രാമപഞ്ചായത്തിൽ പ്രവർത്തനം തുടങ്ങിയത് പത്തൊൻപത് വാർഡിൽ നിന്നുമായിട്ട് എണ്ണായിരത്തി അഞ്ഞൂറ്റി നാൽപ്പത് വീടുകളിലാണ് നമ്മളോട് കളക്ട് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ എത്തുന്നത് ജനങ്ങൾ നല്ല രീതിയിൽ ഞങ്ങളോട് സഹകരിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഒരു മാസത്തിൽ ആറായിരം കിലോയോളം പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് കളക്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് Now there are plans by the central government to adapt the model for local self government across the country. Drawing lessons from the experiences of Menangal Gram Panchayat. Ministry of Panchayat Raj has initiated a general awareness program in its regional conferences and workshops on urban planning. A lot of things can be carried out by the panchayats. For this purpose, ministry is giving a framework that is at the preliminary stage it is upon the framework that the states have to act now the panchayat is taking stock of its carbon emission levels to understand the impact of its interventions the data collection will continue till march 2022 so the carbon economy global warming is increasing the amount of carbon dioxide has crossed 400 parts per million hurricanes cyclones earthquakes droughts floods are now frequent in the carbon economy this is inevitable we have to foresee the end of carbon economy such should act as a catalyst in building up new sustainable economy indeed indeed the church could not bring out such a new economic order that involves political economic social and other dimension church should act a, should, should have an ecological vision of the new society that should emerge in genesis chapter 45 verse to 5 to 7 for two years now there has been famine in the land and for the next five years there will not be plowing or reaping do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here god send me ahead of you to save lives by great deliverance like joseph church has been selected by god as an ecological prophet pharaoh and joseph had 70 years millions of species including humans whose homes are at risk risk due to climate conflict loss and damage like joseph we have to draft plans implement green protocol in our church and organization advocacy in reducing global warming we urge ecological activities form an integral part of the pastoral ministry of the church christians cannot be indifferent the deforestation global warming pollution natural resource depletion species extinctions and habitat destruction all of which threaten the life of our planet because so many of these threats are driven by greed we must also actively seek to create more compassionate and sustainable economies that support the well-being of god's creation who or injures the dignity of the animal the dignity of the animals injures god we should consider earth as a single complex system as a living organism every subsystem is linked to all other subsystem systems through the blowing of winds oceans the migration of species and cycles of growth maturation aging and death utilizing the air we breathe we are united with all animals plants vehicles factories 
and industrial chimneys. Hence, we must build an economy that will support, not undermine future generation. As an organized body, Green Church can work as a catalyst for sustainable economic transformation. Green, movement, green Church movements are for building up a sustainable economy to protect the rights of future generations. It is the right time to think of a new sustainable economy. In summary, God has given a habitat for every creation in this universe. The current climate crisis is accelerating ecological instability, which results in the loss of habitats that are homes for millions of species. We have to repent and transform. Earth is a living body. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. If any part of the earth suffers, all suffer with it. Fossil fuel-based, automobile-centered, throwaway economy is not a suitable model. Alternative is a solar hydrogen energy economy. In one of, stop praying, in one of the meetings of bishops in Africa, one bishop said, let us pray for rain. Immediately another bishop said, Bishop, do not, do not pray for rain. Before praying, we must stop deforestation. Here God has no role. We are the, with the people engaged with the deforestation. Before making any request to God, we must do our role. Stop preaching. Three churches, Patriarch Bartholomew, Canterbury Archbishop, Welby, and Pope Francis had offered an invaluable leadership in issuing a joint statement during the season of creation. But their statement released just before the world leaders gather at the UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, to debate the steps to combat the climate crisis. Reverend Fletcher Harper, in an article, mentioned that they failed to specify who is truly responsible for the climate emergency and what really must change. He is saying that no meaning in this preaching without mentioning the culprit. We face a climate emergency because the fossil fuel industry has put its own profits above the well-being of people and planet. Industrial agriculture responsible for massive deforestation and violating the indigenous rights is also to blame. Governments have the out governments have outrightly supported the destruction or played both sides of the fence. We must be good stewards of creation or our faith teaches us to protect the earth. We have diplomatic relations with those who are responsible for climate change. Hence, stop this type of preaching. Thank you very much.